Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at how to use this wonderful material called glitter film. We're going to look at these ombre lovely orange fabrics and we're going to introduce some block printing. And welcome back guys. So to get started we're going to need our black paint and I've got my little tub here. Um, you don't want to add water to the paint, you want to use it neat because if you add water it's going to run off of our block print and you don't need very much either. So there's my little bit of paint and I'm using a sponge because I find this easier to apply the paint. So I'm just going to load the sponge and you want to get a nice covering on the sponge so there we go, We've got a nice cover in there and then you're going to take your block print and it's a dabbing action so you dab your acrylic paint I'm using here um, all over the block print and you keep going looking at it and when you've got a nice even layer across there you're ready to print that onto your fabric pop that down, put that down. you will need a Mine's very messy, but you can tell I've used it a lot. So this is a, like a rubber foam base. I've got my piece of cotton material there, and it's a firm push. Push down, rock slightly, and let the paint that you've applied to the block sink onto the fabric. Now that should be enough, and then take it away in a clean action, and there's your block print. So we've finished with the block print now, so I can pop that to one side. That now leads to dry. Um, it takes about 10 minutes, and when it's dry, you now need to get this ready for the stitching part of the, uh, the exercise. So here's one that I did earlier. It's all dry, and I now need to put that on something a little bit more stable so that I can go to the sewing machine and free motion stitch that without the sewing machine being able to sort of you know, grab hold of the fabric. So what I need now is some Pelmet Violin, or S80 I think is what they call it. I have my S80 Pelmet Violin. So what you need to do is attach that onto there. Now you could use 505 Adhesive Spray, but it does tend to spray around all over the place. So what I like to use is some good old fashioned Bonder Web. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to iron this on. So here's my makeshift ironing cover. I'm going to open that out a bit, put it like that and I'm just going to trim off the excess of the bond web because I don't want to bond web my towel. Pop that down, it should be the rough gluey side down onto the violin and then with a nice hot iron you're going to iron that onto there Make sure you do it properly, don't rush it. Let the heat penetrate through and melt the glue. So there we go. That should be on there now. I can take them. Now, we're going to remove the paper backing, which will leave the Bonder Web glue on the Pelmet Violin. It is on there, I promise you. And then you're going to take your piece that you stamped, my one should be dry now, and you are going to iron it on there so that it sticks and we're ready for sewing then. There we go, so that's all on there, it's stable on the back, this will all get neatened up later on and we're ready to sew. We're now going to sew round our block print with the black thread. So I've set my machine up again for free motion and I'm going to use the block print to suggest where I stitch. And I don't necessarily need to be on the line. I'm emulating the shapes that I can see in front of me and I'm adding some detailed edges to my lovely block print. And you'll see that I really am just outlining using the design. 
Now as you go, because this brock print is like a lovely sort of um, flower arrangement, we can add some extra bits. So with your free motion stitching, put in some branches, and these can have sequins attached to them later on. We've now got our design outlined and now I'm going to put some lines across the work which seems a bit strange really but they'll all come into their own later on and it's really to teach you the movement of pushing your machine forward and pulling it back so I'm literally just going to sew from one side of my work and I'm going to come back across the other side all across everything that I've stitched and I'm going to put in almost like zebra stripes you're probably thinking what on earth is she doing that for it will all come together at the end if you don't like the zebra stripes you could put in vermicelli you could practice your quilting skills anything to fill up the background and just give that sort of plain color a little bit of interest and pull the black together i'm not even worried about the design i'm just sewing from one side to the other because I've got a lot of top embellishment to go on this and it's all going to work so there we go, just coming to the end now if you need to stop and turn round, stop with your needle down turn your work round and then you can continue on this last part there you go so now we're going to prepare our glitter film flowers which are going to um, be popped on top of our block print. So to prepare them they're going to be cut from this gorgeous gorgeous sparkly glitter film. This is a wonderful product. It comes in 30 or so different colours but today we're using the shocking pink and then this more of a rose pink. Now it comes with a protective layer on top here and it is a little bit of a devil to get it off but I, I tend to take it off before I start. So rather than cut these awkward little shapes and then try and get it off, I actually pull the clear layer off of the glitter before I start. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mark off some of my templates onto the back of it. So I have got my biro, anything that marks will do and I'm just going to draw around my template you can see it's well used I've done a lot of these I love glitter these make wonderful birthday cards wonderful book covers um, little mini quilts there's so many things you can do with it I'm also going to add some of these lovely shapes which again they're appearing in my design here so I'm just going to draw some on here so that I can use them later on I'm also going to do that in this color too so I'm going to pop that on there I'm going to do another flower and a few more of these lovely shapes here I also need to make sure I put the circle in for the middle of the flower now I'm just doing that freehand you can use a, um, a, a circle or a penny or something like that to draw around but I also want one on the red because the red circle goes on the pink flower and the pink circle goes on the red flower. So here's some that I prepared later. You're gonna cut those out with scissors now, but before you cut them out, remember to make sure you take this off. Doesn't matter if you forget, it's just that when you're trying to get the clear film off of something that's got five or six petals on it, you get so carried away getting the, cling, the, cl the clear film off that you actually pull and you actually split it and then you end up with a four petal flower rather than a five petal flower. So always remember to take that off first. So here I have some that I prepared earlier. So what I've done here is I've set the sewing machine up for free motion stitching and I am adding a black edge to my 
little funny shapes that we cut out earlier and I'm just on the edge of the material I'm just putting in that nice black edge taking my time and I'm just going to go onto this flower now so I'm going to come into the flower and then stitch around its edge around the circle and I'm going to swirl into the middle come back out again and as I hit the edge I'm now going to start putting in those lovely little stamens that go around the edge which later on will have some beads on them and all your pieces need to be outlined with black so that we can make them dimensional on top of your piece of block printed fabric. There you go. And you just complete the rest. You can put other patterns inside if you wish, but I tend to keep to the edge and keep it quite simple and use my beads and sequins later. We've then gone to the sewing machine and we've sewn in all the details. I've then taken a sharp pair of scissors and you cut them out from the pelmet violin and you, they're then dimensional. So they're now ready to go onto our piece of work. So you've got a decision to make. You could put them onto the piece of work like this, bead it and sequin, bead and sequin it and put it in a photo frame or in a frame which you know so you don't have to have any um, you don't have to tidy the edges but if you want to make something like this what you need to do is to decide how much of this you're going to keep so what I tend to do is a piece of birthday card make myself a shape and I actually pop it down onto my work and then with a friction pen this is one of these pens where you can draw like a biro but when you iron it it disappears I'm going to draw a line round there and then I would go back to the sewing machine and I would sew that line in so I can then cut away all of this excess around the edge and the look you get with that is something like the edge here so here's all my zebra lines going across the middle here's the marked edge that I made with the pen I've stitched it and I've cut them out and I've got a raw edge now you can leave them as a raw edge or if you feel you want to you can pop them under your sewing machine put your sewing machine on a zigzag stitch and you can satin stitch the edges if you want a nice neat clean look but I quite like raw edges so I've left mine like that so the next thing you need to do is you need to attach these onto your work and it's up to you where you put them now if it was if I'm going to cut this out I like this overhanging look that I've got here so I probably would stitch the edge of mine first and then I would have these so that they, they, they actually came off the edge of the work but I've shown you how to do that so I've got one here that's nearly done and what I've done here is I've added a few extra little bits of the glitter film which was left over and I've ironed that this time not onto the pelmet violin but directly onto the fabric and I haven't stitched it and it will stay there quite nicely without it being stitched. I've then got my beads and my beading needle and I have embellished where I wanted to with little beads coming off of those little bits that we put on here these little bits that we put on here you could put beads and sequins on there and then that's ready to have your extra pieces layered on top and you know what this panel I thought was finished but you know what you could still keep going look at that I can actually make that look very different depending on where I place my flowers but I'm not covering all of my block print because that block print looks lovely in the background so attach these on I'm then going to need my needle and thread so I've got my collection of sequins 
and beads on here. I've threaded a beading needle with some strong thread and I'm going to just come up through my fabric where I wish to place a flower. I'm going to pop on a flower and come through the flower in the middle. I'm going to take a sequin and pop that on my needle and I'm going to pick up a bead. Slide them down and the bead is going to hold the sequin against the flower and it's going to hold it all in place so I'm going to miss the bead, find the sequin hole, push down, take my needle and thread through to the back, not catch it round everything. As I pull that up that will now hold that in place and all I need to do is do a couple of over sewing stitches on the back here all right and then you can add other beads as well so if you want beads on your stamen ends here you can now come up through all the layers pick up a little seed bead and go back down again through your work move to the next stamen come through all layers pick up a little seed bead whoops missed it gotcha through all layers again and you can see very quickly that the beads and the sequins are bringing it all together okay if you don't like beading and putting sequins on then you will need to find another way of embellishing it um, but I just love beads and sequins I think you know with the glitter it just brings out that little magpie in me of somebody who likes shiny things and you just keep going round until you've attached on your flower as you wish if you want to put some of the um, longer pieces on again you cut those out nice sharp pair of scissors those can then be tucked underneath and the way I attach those is I just put a long stitch I come up there and because it's black thread and because it's got a black edging I put like a long stitch in there from the bottom to that point there that looks like the middle of the leaf pop that down over the top and it's all held in place so you can see that with just very few things and some sequins and beads I can just continue to go with this and they look lovely on books so if you've got a spare book cover this is a nice hardback book here you could decorate that book by popping it on there you could use a glue gun to attach it and you could give that to a friend for Christmas or a birthday I think she'd be thrilled to pieces with it that's the end of my tutorial. I hope you enjoyed that. I look forward to seeing what you do with your glitter film. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you've got any pictures you want to send me, because I'm always interested in what you do with everything that you learn, don't forget to pop over to my Facebook page.